Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 1204 of the Juice Box Podcast. On today's episode, we'll be speaking with Mary. She's in her late 30s, diagnosed when she was 18 years old. We're going to hear her story, and then Mary's going to talk a lot about her experience with the EverSense CGM. Nothing you hear on the Juice Box Podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan. Don't forget to save 40% off of your entire order at CozyEarth.com. All you have to do is use the offer code JUICEBOX at checkout. That's JUICEBOX at checkout to save 40% at CozyEarth.com. If you're looking for community around type 1 diabetes, check out the Juice Box Podcast private Facebook group, Juice Box Podcast, Type 1 Diabetes. But everybody is welcome. Type 1, Type 2, gestational, loved ones, it doesn't matter to me. If you're impacted by diabetes and you're looking for support, comfort, or community, check out Juice Box Podcast, Type 1 Diabetes on Facebook. If you have type 2 or pre-diabetes, the Type 2 Diabetes Pro Tip Series from the Juice Box Podcast is exactly what you're looking for. Do you have a friend or a family member who is struggling to understand their type 2 and how to manage it? This series is for them. Seven episodes to get you on track and up to speed. Today's episode of the Juice Box Podcast is sponsored by Omnipod, and Omnipod makes the Omnipod 5 and the Omnipod Dash. If you're looking for the freedom provided by a tubeless insulin pump, you're looking for Omnipod. Omnipod.com slash juice box. This morning, like every morning, I woke up and started my day with AG1. You can as well. Drink ag1.com slash juice box. When you use my link, you're going to get some free stuff that I'll tell you about later, and you'll be supporting the juice box podcast. Drink ag1.com slash juice box. Links in the show notes, links at juiceboxpodcast.com to AG1, Omnipod, and all of the sponsors. My name is Mary. I'm known as T1D Artistry on most platforms. I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in 2003. I have a soon-to-be 10-year-old. I'm married and I work in tech. Okay. 2003, how old were you then? I was 18. 18. I had turned 18 in May, diagnosed in October. Wow. Wow. Was there any other type 1 diabetes in your family? Not a one. No. Nope, nothing. How about other autoimmune issues like celiac or thyroid? Do you have any or is there any in your family? I do have some. My diabetes was like the, I guess you could say the peak. And then it just started tumbling from there. So six months after I got diagnosed with glaucoma and then... uh, about a couple of years after I had my son, they started taking on my thyroid, said I ticked off for Graves and Hashimoto's. Not really sure how you took off for both, but that's what they told me. Mm-hmm. But so I do take medicine for my thyroid, my stomach, I have some gastro, gastro, what is it called? Is it gastroparalysis? They say you have gastroparesis. Yes, gastroparesis. That's what it is. The delayed emptying that happens. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, is, sure. Is that something that started a long time after your diagnosis or has that been with you since your diagnosis? Like trouble with your stomach, digestion, that kind of stuff? I would say that came on with it, mm-hmm. but I didn't get an official diagnosis until after having my son. Okay. Because the, who I was going to before when I would complain of issues, they would just say, oh, it's because your numbers are high. So, Mary, I'm going to share something with you, and I want you to keep in mind mm-hmm. that I am not a doctor of any kind, okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Your pancreas does more than just make insulin. It actually creates a number of different digestive enzymes. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people with type 1 diabetes can see digestive issues like stomach pain when they're eating. They don't eliminate well. Uh, often you'll see uh, constipation followed by diarrhea. I'm sorry, this is going this way. If any of that sounds common to you for your situation, I'm going to suggest to you that you just get an over-the-counter digestive enzyme and try taking it with your meals for a few days and see if it doesn't help. I do take some IbiGuard. Oh, what, what is that called? IbiGuard. And that, that is, it's like night and day. So 
of course, not medical advice. It's no, just what yeah, I yeah, take because I listen, like it. I barely got through high school. You don't have to tell me this isn't medical <laughs> advice. So I don't know what Ivy Guard is. I'm going to look it up. But yeah. what I'm going to say to you I'll is- Take the one in the green box. I found it. So that's for abdominal, con- let me see what's in it. You're like, like I didn't peppermint. think- Peppermint, it's like concentrated peppermint wool. Oh yeah, listen, between you and I, you don't have to listen to me, yeah. but I'll, I'll send you some, at the end of this, I'll send you some episodes about digestion, gut health, mm-hmm. stuff like that. It's, it's not an expensive lift, it's over the counter. You try it for a few days and if you don't see anything with it, fair enough, but it very possibly might clear up a lot of your issues. Works for me. I'll definitely take a look into that. I will tell you more about it afterwards. Oh, sure. So you're 18 years old. You get type yeah. one. How do you, ma- so how, how, I'm trying to do the math on that. How long goes that? 2003 was 21 years ago. So you're, yeah. you're 39. I will be this year. Yep. Oh, happy birthday. Okay. Thanks. So next month. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. Get you. I'm not till July, but I'm older. I'm not looking to be older. So. <laughs> I'm not going to celebrate exactly the same way, probably. But what I want to know is, like, what was management like back then? Was it a pump? Was it a glucose monitor? Like, how did they start you? It was MDI. Mm-hmm. So my diagnosis, actually getting diagnosed was very traumatic. I was in my, I was at one campus in the dorm, kept going to the nurse on campus. And she kept saying I had a 72 hour bug. Mm-hmm. This bug continued. It did not go away. It Progressed to me throwing up three times a day, Mm. you know, drinking everything in sight and having no idea what's going on, not eating and still throwing up to the point where it was like the pink, the stomach bow and stuff like that. It was crazy. So you're in DKA and you think you have a stomach bug? Yes. I was full blown DKA. Mm -hmm. And the nurse on campus kept that where, you know, how they have the little offices on campus. And she was like, no, it's just a stomach. It's just a stomach bug. It's just a stomach bug. And I was like, it's not going away. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Did you end up unconscious? Did you finally go to a hospital? What did you do? Every day on my private Facebook group, I see people talking about Omnipod 5 and how much they love it. Maybe you've seen people talking about Omnipod 2 and thought, oh, I wish I could have an experience like that with an insulin pump. If you have felt that way, you very well may be experiencing FUMU, which is, of course, a fear of missing out on Omnipod. FUMU is often marked by symptoms like wishing that you could wear your outfits that don't have pockets in them and dreaming about walking past doorknobs and cabinet latches without getting tubing caught. Well, if you've been fantasizing about jumping into a swimming pool, Without disconnecting from your insulin pump first, I have great news for you. You don't have to suffer from FUMU any longer. So stop stuffing your insulin pump in your bra and down your shorts and head to Omnipod.com slash juice box right now to get rid of that FUMU. See what everybody's talking about. My almost 20 year old daughter has been wearing an Omnipod every day since she was four years old. You can too. Omnipod.com slash juice box. Check it out. Well, the end of the second week, I ended up waking up in the middle of the night to throw up. And that I called my mom and I was like, you have to come get me. So she got off. She came and got me. I fell asleep before we got to the railroad tracks where that were only two blocks away. Mm. So that clued her into that. She's really, really sick. She picked up my grandmother. We went to urgent care. The doctor there, I told him, hey, it's about that time. I'm going to throw up again. And he just gave me this look like, how do you know you're about to throw up? And I was like, I feel it. It's the same time I've been throwing up for the past two weeks. He gives me the Petri dish. And I'm like, that's not enough. He's like, well, you can go to the bathroom, but leave the door open. Fine. Threw up everywhere. I guess the volume, the smell clued him in. And he's like, I have one more test for you. Took my numbers. They were higher than the machine would go. He looked at my mom and said, your child is very sick. She has to go to the hospital right now. Do not stop for anything. If you don't feel comfortable, then we'll call the ambulance. The hospital was only a mile from the urgent care. Mm -hmm. So we went straight there. Do you think he smelled the ketones? He had to. Yeah. Because it's that, you know, it's that pungent smell. Mm. But at the time, I had no clue what it was. Of course. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. Like how you made it two weeks like that at school. Yeah, I just was on a I was on a decline for the two weeks. Yeah. And that last week, it was just awful. Oh, they told me that had I went 
to sleep that night or went back to sleep that day that I would have been in a coma and probably wouldn't have woken up. Yeah, my daughter was very close to a coma when she was diagnosed. She was two, but it was crazy. Uh, We just got lucky. And very similarly, actually, I said to my wife, I think Arden's breath smells weird. I've been meaning to say that to you. Yeah. She asked me how, and I said, I don't know. I I think it smells like metallic or fruity or Mm -hmm. something like that. And then my wife was like, oh, my God, I think she has diabetes. Like, just like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, is that a is that a thing that sticks with you or are you able to have gotten past that in all these years? I think. You know what I mean? Do you still have like, do you have memories of it that sit, sit with you unsteadily? Yeah, it, it does. It sits with me unsteadily and then it comes up a lot with my son. How? He's a strong, strong kid because birth was traumatic in part due to my diabetes and having him. Mm. So he's gone through a lot, even within his first 21 days of life. So for him, he usually doesn't feel bad. If he does feel bad, he's down hard. And we've had two, three, no, three experiences where his sugar has suddenly dropped into the 40s. How do you know that? Why are you tracking it? No, because he was lethargic. Oh, and you tested his blood sugar. And I tested him. Oh, I see, I see. Oh. And then I took him to straight to the hospital. Because mm-hmm. one time I didn't test him. And I was like, he's just acting funny. He's not himself. And they tested him and he was in the 40s at the hospital. And then they were just like, the only thing that they told me is that we can continue to watch it. It could be that maybe he'll develop, but we don't know. Thankfully, it only happened when he was... It was two, three, and four. Okay. It was so weird. It was he, two, three, and four. But then after that, he's been good as far as that goes. He's 10 now. But like when he's sick and he's not acting like himself, he's lethargic or anything changes, I automatically test just out of fear of not testing. Of course, yeah. And then something actually is wrong with him. Have you ever considered getting trial net for him to see if he has autoantibodies for type one? Yes. He, yes. I have put in an order for that so that we can do that. Oh, good. I'm glad. Oh, I, I hope it, I'll be a good news, but I'm glad you're looking. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So they let you out of the hospital. Mm-hmm. MDI. How long does MDI go on for until you like, do you eventually get a pump? Is that the first technology you get? Yeah, I did MDI. So I got diagnosed in 2003. I had him in 2014. I got a pump, I believe it was 2016, mm-hmm. right before he turned three, because I had got sick. I had DK, another DKA after I had him. And I was like, that's it. Absolutely not. I was like, if I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure that I'm here, that I'm healthy to take care of him. Because if I'm not here, who's going to take care of him? Right. Yeah. Nobody's going to take care of him like his mother. So I was like, I have to. I I had a fear of the pump. I'm not going to lie. I had a fear of it. Tell me why. Well, at that time, there had been incidents of people like rolling on them. I had a lady that actually lived. Well, I didn't know her directly, but I knew someone that knew her. And she happened to roll over on hers Mm -hmm. and dosed. Oh, gave herself. Oh, back then, you you could just push a button, I guess. You know, the technology wasn't where it is now. So and it was like at that time, I was like, oh, I'm going to get one. And then that happened. And I was like, absolutely Scared not. Your way again. But then after I had him, I was like, look, technology's better. We're at a better point in life. Let's do it. And I first went on to I've done Omnipod, T-Slim and then back to Omnipod. You're on Omnipod now? Yeah. Yeah. You use the dash? I'm on five. Oh, no kidding. Mm-hmm. Will you run it in manual mode? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've had the regular dash and then five. Gotcha. It's funny how parents, especially moms, like measure their lives. You're like, in 2016, I got a pump when my son was three. Yeah. I'm like, oh, like hey, she's measuring it against her, his age. It's so so nice. Because he was at my appointments. Because he'd be in the stroller and go with me to all of my doctor's appointments. Yeah, yeah. Is it fair to say that even though you had some scary stories back then, you looked at the big picture, got that next DK and said to yourself, like, I, I have to push past my fear and, and go to this technology? Oh, yeah. hundred percent justifiable. Gotcha. Okay, that's what got you there. Okay, so then if that's what got you there, I have to ask you, because I think you've done something Mm -hmm. kind of miraculous, actually. You've made a leap with your CGM technology. Like you're here today to talk about the Eversense CGM. 
I'm going to ask first, which CGMs had you used? Had you used CGMs previously to ever since? I was first introduced to CGMs at my doctor's office. I did, was Medtronic's, what was that? The first one called like Night Guard or something. Oh. Or Night Guardian, What whatever it was. They stuck on you at the doctor's office. You wore it for like a week and then they took it off. Yeah. Oh, I don't know that. But Guardian is their, I think was their um, CGM. I did that and I was like, ooh, this hurts. I don't like this. I like knowing where my numbers are. But at that time, they didn't give you the information. You just hooked it up and brought it back. They didn't give you anything else to go with. Oh, so okay. then after that one, I wore, I did Dexcom. I was on four. I've done Dexcom four, five, and six. And I've done Freestyle one and two. The Libras. Okay. Yeah. So how do you make, like, speaking of leaps, I think it's fair to ask the question, like Mm -hmm. when you said to yourself, this Eversense thing is implantable, did that feel like a leap to you? It's important to me that the supplements I take are of the highest quality. And that's why for the past number of years, I've been drinking AG1. Unlike many supplement brands, AG1 is researched and developed by an in-house team of scientists, doctors, and nutritionists with decades of experience in their respective fields. I know I can trust what's in every scoop of AG1 because AG1 is NSF certified for sport, one of the most rigorous independent quality and safety certification programs in the supplement industry. AG1's ingredients are heavily researched for efficacy and quality, and I love that every scoop also includes folate, magnesium, and ashwagandha for stress support. So if you want to replace your multivitamin and more, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first subscription at drinkag1.com slash juicebox. That link again is drinkag1.com slash juicebox. When you click on the links, you're supporting the podcast. Check it out. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. What was the conversation that you had with with yourself like, and then how did you move through it? I was at the point that I felt like I wanted something more Mm long-term. I just knew that at the day and age that we were at, at that time, there had to be something that lasted longer than two weeks, a week, or I would have a failure and it would last two days. Yeah. Things like that. So I did digging on the internet, digging, 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 and I found it. And I immediately contacted them and was like, send me what you have, anything within four hours of where I live and I will go. No kidding. Oh, you were willing to travel to do it, even if you had to. Oh, yeah. Was this very early in the beginning of ever since when you first heard about it? Or how long ago was this? I started in 20, 2021. Hmm. Okay. I believe it was 2020, 2021. Yeah. So you think you've been using it for like three years? Yeah, I'm on three. I'm going in my, yeah, I'm on three years. Wow. Because it was, it was during the pandemic. Okay. Because I may have got it. I think we started in 2020 and then I got it inserted. I got the center placement in 2021. I believe is how that went. That first insertion. Are you nervous? And how how did you find the experience? Like, can you talk me through it? I was very excited about it. I was like, I've gone through so much in life at this point that going to the office to get a sensor placement didn't bother me at all. Mm -hmm. My doctor is actually near the DC area. So it takes like an hour, hour and a half to get over there. So I took my husband and my son, of course they couldn't go in because it was in the middle of the pandemic. So they stayed in the car, but we made a day of it and just made an experience of heading to DC afterwards. And I went, we went in, we went over, Pros and cons, things like that, how I felt about it, numb my arm, did the placement, and then I was good to go. We hooked everything up to my phone, and I was good to go. How about that? How many times do you think you've had a sensor placed? Oh, let's see. Because the first one was 90 days. I think I had three 90 days, and... Two 180 days. I'm actually due next month to go get another 180 day. Yeah, there's six months now, huh? 
Yeah. Yeah, that sounds crazy. What's the process like? You said they numbed your arm. Obviously, they have to make mm-hmm. a make a an insertion point. So, is it painful? No, because I'm numb. Okay. And then, how about afterwards? What does it feel like when the when the numbing agent goes away? What do you, What are you left with? Nothing. I don't feel anything. No. Like it's not tender. It doesn't because they're not in there long. Mm-hmm. Like it's literally they just make this. They make the insertion point pop it in and that's it. So it's not like, and it's, it's just, it, there's no stitches or anything like that. It's just some tagaderm that goes over. They just like put a little seal on it and then it heals up. Yeah. 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 So it's not, so it's, there's not a lot of pressure or movement or manipulation or anything like that. So my arm's fine afterwards. How long do you think it is until it's healed over? I would say under a week for you under a week. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing. So I guess you're saying painless, right? I guess maybe Mm -hmm. the injection that numbs you, you might feel, but it sounds like the rest of it's pretty good. Then it's in there. Now the process of using it, right? So you're wearing the transmitter and the transmitter, what kind of goes on over top of where the sensor is inserted? Yes. You got a silicone adhesive and you can change those out daily or as needed and you just place that over top of where your sensor placement is. Hmm. And then it reads back to my phone. Interesting. So the adhesive's different, right? So you... Yeah. Because everybody's thinking right now about the adhesive on their pumps or their CGMs or whatever. But mm-hmm. So it's silicone-based. So gentle on your skin? Is that the... Very. Okay. Very gentle. And I can take it off and on. So that's the best part of it is I can just move it. Like, say... If want to put a new one on if I don't like the way it looks or the biggest thing was when my son knocked it off the first time because he's knocked off everything else (laughs) and he already knew that you know if I knock it off mom has to order a new one we have to go through this process and everything else so when he knocked it off his eyes got huge and I was like no you're fine look and I just put it right back on (laughs) goes right back you're okay (laughs) and I was like yeah He's like, that's it? And I was like, yeah, that's it. We're good. So then the transmitter basically, so the silicone adhesive goes on your skin, then the transmitter just sticks to that. Mm -hmm. And if it pops off or you can take it, it doesn't have to come off by mistake. Like you could say to yourself, like, I'm getting a shower. I'm taking this off. Absolutely. Come out, towel yourself off, pop it right back on again. Absolutely. No restarting, no anything Mm -hmm. new. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see the value in that for sure. What's the value been for you going to to ever since with an inserted CGM. What's the difference maker for you? Why do you keep doing it, I guess? For me, ever since, my ever since E3 is such a huge part of my life, but it's also something I don't have to think about. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about it. I know that I go for my sensor placements and then I don't have to fool with it again. It's on. Once it's in, it's in. Right. So I just put my transmitter on change it, charge it, call it a day. I don't have to constantly worry, is it going to get knocked off? Am I going to damage it? Is my son going to knock it off? Am I going to hit a doorway and knock it off? Is it going to work? It works. And the accuracy, unbelievable, unmatched across the board. And those are peace of mind points that you don't think about ahead of time. But then later you're like, oh, I know when I see this number, this is really what's going on in my body. Right. I don't have to guess, like, is it right? Did I roll on it funny? Is it not exactly where it needs to be? Am I getting a false reading? It's so many things that I don't have to worry about with this. Do you get, with Eversense, can you get a compression low, what people would call a compression low with other CGMs, or does that not happen? No, I don't get those. Okay. And then how do you see the data? Is it on a a receiver or on your phone or how do you see it? It's an app on my phone, ever since app on my phone. Nice. Has alarms, tells you if you're high or low, can you set them yourself? Yes. You can set up the alarms. You can do high lows. They have on-body vibe, vibrations. So that's nice. So if I don't want it to alarm... Like tonight, I have my son's spring concert we're going to. Mm. So I'm going to turn my audio alarm off, but leave my vibe alarms on so that I still know what's going on. So if something changes, I can go ahead and adjust as needed. Describe that so that for people who don't know, the transmitter now. So let's say if you were going to go with your audio alarm set, I don't mm-hmm. know where you, I don't know where you're, you have your stuff set up. My daughter's set at 70 for her low. 
So if you yeah, go under, me too. oh, okay, cool. So if you go under 70, you get a beep on your phone. Right. But if you shut that off and go to vibe, then the transmitter vibrates when you get to 70? Yeah, there's different types of vibrates to let you know if you're heading low, if you're heading high. There's different pulse points. And it's vib- it's very similar to like a cell phone vibrating, mm-hmm. but in pulses. Okay. And how do you find that? It, there's, I'm imagining people hear that. Some people think that's amazing. Some people think it's irritating, whatever. But like, what? how do you find it? How do you integrate it into your life? I like it because there's times where, like I said, like the concert, I don't want to set off the concert and have everybody looking at me instead of the kids. Mm-hmm. So I'll turn off the audio, but I still need to know where I'm what's going on with me without having to constantly look at my phone. Yeah. So I know if I'm not getting any alerts, we're good to go. If I'm not feeling anything, we're good to go. So a different pulse for hitting a 70 and a different pulse mm-hmm. for falling even, and, and one for different, and you can tell the difference between them. Yes. Oh, that's mm-hmm. so cool. That's really amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And there's even one that comes through, like if I need to charge it. So that's good. <laughs> Does it play like uh, taps? Or what is it? Because it's dying. It's, <laughs> no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Uh, that's so. Even if it needs to be charged, it vibrates in a different way. Yeah, that's wonderful. And you talked earlier about the accuracy, like you know, for the the way that the the device works. Mm-hmm. My understanding is when it's first inserted, there's a schedule that you have to calibrate that, and then after that, you calibrate it once a day. That's another yeah. thing I think somebody's going to be like, oh, I don't want to calibrate. But can you talk about how that works in your life and why it's something you're you're okay with? Yeah, for the first, I believe it's for the first 21 days, you do two calibrations a day. Mm-hmm. They're about 12 hours apart. You do that. But then after that, it's just once a day. Okay. So you can set it up for when you want to when you want to do the calibration. Totally fine. And for me, I'm OK with it. To me, I'm, it makes sense to me because I calibrate with my contour next and the accuracy is there. Yeah. So if I don't have to worry about accuracy, I'm not going to worry about testing my glucose once a day. Mm-hmm. The contour next is a great meter, too. Right. Yeah. It is. It's so good. So you're seeing a lot of accuracy between the Eversense CGM and your meter. Oh, absolutely. That's fantastic. So, I, I mean, I guess like elephant in the room, right? You have an right. Omnipod 5, but you can't, mm-hmm. you can't use it in automation because Eversense doesn't work with it at this time. So I need to know, that's a trade-off that a lot of people might say I, I'm not willing to make, but why are you? Mm-hmm. Why does the Eversense mean so much to you that you're you're willing to kind of hold off on algorithms? I'm holding off because I'm confident that tech improves every day. So I know at some point there's going to be a change and it'll everything will work exactly the way it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, I'm not willing to risk the accuracy. I'm not willing to go back to second guessing Every single number I see, I'm not willing to go back to the irritation on my arm or wherever my site is. I'm not willing to go back to failures and I'm not willing to go back to if for some reason it does get knocked off, not being able just to simply pick it up and put it back on. Okay. Yeah. So so you feel like you're gaining more than you're losing. Exactly. I got you. And you're pretty confident or hopeful, I guess, that one day it'll all work together. Oh, yes, absolutely. All right. I see how you're thinking for sure. Tell me, if you would, what you would say to another person. Mm -hmm. If my daughter came up to you and said, I don't know, I don't know if I want to insert this thing into my arm. Like, how would you explain your experience in a way that would help her to feel better about it or make her interested I would say if you're worried about having something inside your arm, weigh your pros and cons, weigh your experiences. How could something like this be more beneficial to you? Yeah. Okay. Even we call like, you know, in the community, we call them naked showers. Mm -hmm. What if you want to have a naked shower every day instead of once every 10, 14 days? Yeah. Like some people are like, oh, that, yeah, that's good. What if you want to be able to change your adhesive daily instead of laying on other products to make them stick and last? 
you can just use the one you have and change it out when you want a fresh, clean one. To always have something that's fresh, clean, and looks nice, that could also be another thing. And it's something that you only, like I said, right now, they last up to six months. So in a sense, it's something that you would only go do twice a year Yeah. versus a standard, what, seven, 10, or 14 days. And you said you had to travel to D.C. the first time, but in the time that mm-hmm. you've been using it, have you found an office that's closer to you or are you still going to that place? I go to him because that's my endo now. And like I have a very a great bond with him. Gotcha. So I don't mind the travel. We like I said, we make a day of it. My son comes to the appointments with me. He videos, he hangs out, he like he's in there in the office. Yeah. When I get my sensor placement placement done. If you hadn't built such a rapport with a doctor, are there doctors closer to you at this point? Do you or have you never even looked, maybe? You know, I haven't looked, but I could go online because they do have a list. So I could request a new list and see what's available. Okay. But I find that I prefer my care in that area. Okay. No, yeah. I mean. Yeah, no, it's definitely just a preference. Yeah, you find an endo you like. I I know plenty of people drive to their endos for for very good reasons. I know because it's so, uh, so hard. It can be hard. Are you okay with this for like younger people, older people? You don't like see a person it doesn't work for in your opinion, or is there a use case that you think, ah, it's not, it wouldn't be great for this. Honestly, I feel like it's good for anyone, anyone that wants something that's reliable, accurate, and they can depend on it and they can just trust and believe in it. Yeah, I think it's worth a shot to try it. There's no harm in trying something. I love the attitude. Honestly, Mary, I, I have a friend who I don't, we, none of us have anymore. He's passed away, but oh, he, so no, no, you're, you're very kind. He was diagnosed a long time ago when he was young. And if I look back on his life, the thing that I take from it that drives how I talk to people on the podcast is he just got complacent. And I'm not certainly saying that like, you know, a stick on CGM is complacency. That's it's all very amazing technology, but like, right. I think you have to be willing to look at what it, exists and wonder like is this the next thing like should i be on this train you you know what i mean yeah because you don't want to get 10 years away or 15 years away like my friend didn't go wait i should be using what kind of insulin like he just didn't know you know he got complacent with what he did and it 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 hurt it hurt him and i'm not saying that you know using a certain cgm would or wouldn't hurt you but i do like the mindset i like the mindset of what's next is this better for me? Let me just at least find out. Like, even if I don't switch, yeah. I should know about it, I guess is the the way I feel about it. Yeah, it's definitely, a diabetes is, you know, it's not one size fits all. Different things work for different people. But being open to at least try something new across the board. Yeah. With your care, with your doctors, with whatever it takes. It's being open to there has to be more than what's right in front of my face. Yeah. It's okay to say no, thank you. But oh, yeah, I wouldn't want you to say I never looked. Right. That to me is it's just I don't know. It's how you get stuck and being stuck. Yeah. Doesn't end up going well at some point. So I was going to ask. It's funny. I usually ask people about like, does your like husband know how to put this on and take this off? But obviously, in this situation, he didn't, doesn't need to know any of that. What do you? Yeah, he can- does. I mean, him and my son. They they know how to like adjust. Like, if for some reason, I mean, of course, they they don't need to, but they know. They take the little sticker off, put the transmitter to the sticker, take off the other part, put it on the arm. They're mm-hmm. good. They know how to check my uh, glucose numbers. They my share my data with my husband. So because he's in military, he works about an hour or so away from me. But then also he's in military so he can be gone different places. So he still checks on me like wherever he's at. Oh. So he knows what's going on. So he he has that. What's it? The ever since now. Is that what the app's called? And then he can follow you just like that. Yeah. Can he change his alarms or does he get them where you get them? Yeah, he can change them. Oh, wow. He can, okay. he can, he can turn them down or anything like that. So, yeah. Right. Do you find yourself taking advantage of the 
of that gentle adhesive? Like, like, do you find yourself just once in a while going, I'm just going to take this off for a couple of minutes? Oh, yeah. yeah. D- fatigue, fatigue on diabetes is a huge thing. And some people don't talk about it. Some people may be embarrassed about it, but it's OK. Mm. Like nobody wants to be attached to everything 24 hours a day, right. all day, every day. No, I hear that. So it gives you a little bit of freedom there just to. Yeah. What do you do? Get into a spot where you're like, my my blood sugar is rock solid right now. I can take this off for a little bit. It's like, like, hey, we're coasting. We're good. Maybe I just need to chill. Like I might have a pod change and I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to take that and this off at the same time. (laughs) Set an alarm and put them both back on. Everybody chill out. I'm taking one of those naked showers. Yeah. 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 (laughs) It's like, hey, just you mind your business. I'm okay. (laughs) Can I feel it through your skin? Like, do you, yeah, can you yeah, find yeah. the sensor? It, it's yeah. pretty close to the top, I guess, then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just like, it's not like something jagged or anything like that. It's, I would say, kind of like if you would feel a Tic Tac. Okay. Okay. Kind of like that. I see. Have you ever, like, held one, like, or seen it? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Is it insane? Like, do you, do you ever have those thoughts? Like, this is, like, going to go inside of me and, like, transmit my blood sugar? Yeah. When I looked at it, I was like, and then I'm a big techie too. So when I saw it, I was like, well, this is cool. I yeah. was like, I like this. I was just seeing the, the space of even just from when I was diagnosed to where we are now, just seeing that growth and change. Mm-hmm. It's astonishing. You know, I tell people all the time, my daughter was diagnosed in 2006. And at that point, it was a meter. They just, they were like here. It was like, I always say it looked like, it looked like it was junky. It felt like it rolled out of a bubble gum machine. Like I put a quarter and it came out a little bubble and I propped it over. It was like junky little meter. Mm -hmm. And they gave us needles and a vial of insulin. And they were like, here you go. Yeah. This This is diabetes. And I was like, oh, okay. Your point is so valuable. Like from that moment till now, my daughter's had type one for 18 years about. Mm -hmm. It's insane. It just, it's insane that we went from, yeah, I don't know if you know, uh, of course you know this, right? Because you've had diabetes a long time too. There was a time in diabetes technology when something exciting was just a new meter. It just looked yeah. different. It wasn't more accurate. It didn't do anything different. It just, they, they're like, here, we redesigned the meter. And everybody's like, oh my God, finally, there's something. And then you, That re- was it, me. Yeah, I, yeah. Anytime I saw something new, I was like, I got it. Right. It's smaller. I can put it somewhere else. It's it's better. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a child, my mom's boyfriend actually had type two. Okay. And he had like that clunky tan. I don't remember what it was called, but I know it looked painful. (laughs) He was wincing every time he took his sugar and it was, or took his glucose it was just a mess and i was like oh <laughs> and to go that. from yeah. remembering that on the kitchen table mm-hmm. to this now like big difference it's just crazy night and day yeah i mean the from you know the first cgm to other companies make him then suddenly somebody's like yeah. oh my god here you can implant i mean I, no kidding like i look at the ever sense and i think <laughs> what is next yeah right yeah, it really does make you feel like they, who figured this out first of all, amazing. And exactly. and, yeah, and and what are we going to do next? Like that's that's all I think about uh now, especially like with AI, which doesn't have anything to do with Eversense, but like you see AI now and you think god, people are going to start getting like treatment decisions from AI and like information and this thing could really double over on itself. I'm excited to see how quickly all this moves along, honestly. Technology is amazing yeah. and as long and then when you have teams that are willing to go that extra mile and think outside the box, just the things that they come up with. Yeah. It just blows me away. Outside the box, right inside your arm. <laughs> right. <laughs> now is the arm where it goes? Are there other places or is that where it goes? Yeah, it's approved for the arm. Okay. Excellent. And you don't have any trouble wearing the transmitter there? You're happy with where it is? No, I don't even think about it honestly. I just put it on and I go. I don't worry about it. I don't think about it. It's it's there. It doesn't bother me. It's not even like, it's not even clunky. It doesn't even like set up high. Like it's flatter than my um, Omnipod. Okay. A similar shape, but, but more uh, streamlined. Yes. Okay. Well, it doesn't have to hold insulin. 
you said earlier when it needs to be charged. So obviously we're talking about mm-hmm. the, tr- the transmitter needs to be charged. So right. what's the process? How long does it take? How often do you have to do it usually? I believe it's about 10, 15 minutes. And I just, when I go take a shower, I just put it on the charger. No. Oh. Oh. Now if I forget, sometimes I forget. So then I just take my shower or whatever. And then if it lets me know, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot to charge it today. And I'll just plug it up and call it a day. That's a good question I didn't ask. So with the transmitter on, Mm -hmm. you can get in the shower still? Yeah. Oh, okay. Can you swim with it? I can. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Right. So like when we, uh, we did a big spring break trip to Miami. So when we were at the pool, I just wore it. But when we went down to the beach... Because, you know, the beach can get wild. Mm. I took it off. Mm-hmm. I would put it in my bag on the sand. I would go play in, a, play in the water with my kid and stuff like that. And then I would come back, put it back on for a little bit or hold it up to my arm just long enough for me to get some readings to come through. Then put it back and go back in the water. Oh, I so see. So that, that's nice. Oh, I see. So you ran back out through the transmitter on, got your number. Yeah. and was like, all right, this is cool. I'm, I'm back again. So like testing, but without... Have to prick your finger. Almost. Exactly. In that scenario. Excellent. Wow. Am I not thinking of questions that I should be like, what do you know about this device that I don't know enough to ask the question about? Like, do you know, it, it, maybe I got to everything, but but did I miss anything? The, I think people have a lot of fear of the appointment, mm-hmm. but they're, it's really not, it's not a scary thing. Like I said, the first one, well, the first one he couldn't go to but then he saw the later ones when he was he was in there with me and he was only five. Mm-hmm. And he like my son's in there watching this happen. And no point was he like, is my mom OK? Like nothing like that. He's just like, OK. Like it's very simple. It's very something you're in and out. You don't have it doesn't take like you don't have to be like, oh, I'm going to be in the doctors for two hours a day. I have to sit and wait. And I have to stay there for a while before I can even leave or da, 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 da. No, you're in and out. That raises a great question. So I saw this video online and it where an insertion was done. And it felt like, I mean, it didn't feel like I looked at the video length. It felt like it was under 10 minutes. And I think it was. So like from when the yeah. doctor reaches for you until you're like, I'm out of here is. Oh, yeah. It's just a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh, oh, it is. Kidding. We talk more than anything else. We talk and chat more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Does the doctor ever say to you, hey, I've got more people using this? Like, is it like, do you ever talk about it like that? Because you sound like you were in yeah. fa- fairly early on. So oh, are you? Yeah his, yeah, his office, he's actually growing with more patients that are using it. I think at the time when I started it with him, it was only like me and maybe one other person. And I believe now he's up to like 10 or 12 people. Do you have a community online of users? Do you know people like through, I don't know, where you're at Instagram or whatever that are also using Eversense or are you a bit of an outsider at this point? I have my my team, my Eversense team that I know that are using it. But as far as the people in my community that's online, the people that I talk to outside of them, so far they're using other products, Mm -hmm. but they always ask me. Like, so do you get this? Do you have failures? Do you have issues with your adhesive and stuff like that? And I'm like, no. I'm like, you guys really need to try this. Yeah, you're seeing the interest from people. Yeah. What about you, Mary, do you think made you more like thoughtful forward on this? Like, how come you didn't have so many like, oh, I'll I'll ask a thousand questions and I'll wait. Like, how come you were able to do it so quickly? What about you lets that happen? I think it was my mind shift it was definitely the mind shift after having my son and knowing that I needed to find what I felt was the best tech across the board to help me manage my diabetes successfully. Mm-hmm. And when I went on my deep dive and found ever since, I was like, oh, that's it. <laughs> I'm in. I was like, that's it. Sign me up today. Like, I'll even be 100% honest with you. When I went to my initial endo at the time, this was a different one. She told me that's for athletes. Well, then put me in, coach, because I'm getting it. <laughs> you should have said, I don't look athletic to you. What the hell? I was like, <laughs> no, nah. I was like, I'm doing it. So I went on, filled out my medical necessity and sent it over and said, sign it. Mm, good for you. Like, I'm very much like, it's. this is me. It's like, that's the thing. I think it takes time. It doesn't happen at the beginning. 
for most people, it doesn't happen at the beginning. Yeah. But at some point in your diagnosis, people realize that it's their own diagnosis. No matter what's going on around you, you have to advocate for yourself because at the end of the day, you're the one that's hurting. You're the one that's going to feel good. You're the one that's going to feel bad. You're the one that has to stress about it. You're the one that has to take care of it. And if something happens to you, the only your immediate or the one that's going to feel it the most work, you know, work's going to replace you. Yeah. Making you making you a mom changes a lot. I know being a dad, the same thing. And and advocating also means being proactive. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it, it you can't just wait till something goes wrong and then speak up. Like the, when you see something out ahead, you know, say, yeah. hey, I'd like to try. It doesn't matter what it is, by the way. It, yeah. It could be a different pump. It could be a, a different insulin, even. You, you might oh, just be absolutely. like, yeah. yeah. I, sw- I, t- I switched mine out. I'm like, what else can we do? Mm. You tried a number of different insulins? Oh, yeah, I did. Humalog, Novolog. There was one, I can't even remember what it was, Fios, mm-hmm. Fias, something like that. And then now I'm on Lumjev. Lumjev. You find that that works well for you, the Lumjev? Yeah, I like it. Nice. I do like that. Is it quicker for you? Yes. Yeah. You don't get the burning. Some people report burning at the injection site, but you don't have that. No, I don't have that. That's excellent. Use that in your pump, no problem. Yes. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Good for you. And I'm very much like, hey, I want to try this. And then my thing is, if I get resistance, like, why are you giving me resistance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I had to have a conversation with someone online the other day. She just wanted to make some changes to her kids' settings. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'm very afraid the doctor is going to yell at me. And I'm like, what? What are we talking about? Look, 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 that's what you're not going to do. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Mary's like, I'm not getting yelled at. That's for sure. (laughs) No. But no, no kidding. Like, there's a real, like, a grown person and yeah. they, they see the need for their kid changing and they actually have a feeling like if I make a change to this, I'm going to get yelled at. And, oh, uh, yeah. I yeah. had an endo that didn't believe me. Like when I would go in, because you remember before the time of being hooked up digitally, you had to write everything down. They would hand you a blank chart mm-hmm. and you had to write everything down. So I would write what I ate, what my numbers were, everything else. And he was like, you're lying. Really? And I was like, no, I'm not. I was like, I'm telling you what's going on. Yeah. And he was like, there's no way if you did this, that this would be the outcome. And I was like, well, I don't know how to show you other than telling you. And if you don't believe me, this isn't going to work. Yeah. Come find out. I ended up switching. Then we found out that my thyroid was playing a big part in things. Because oh. I told him, I was like, I think my thyroid is something's up. And he was like, no. I was like, I'm exhausted. He was like, you're exhausted because your numbers are high. Like, it was everything went back to, well, it's because your numbers are high. Well, my numbers are high for a reason. Yeah, they did this to my wife, by the way. My wife doesn't have diabetes, but she had Mm -hmm. a a thyroid issue, and they would tell her, well, you should diet and exercise and Mm -hmm. lose my wife's. Like, I don't eat poorly. I'm just, I'm gaining weight out of nowhere, you know, and I'm exhausted. Yeah, you feel like you're gaining weight from breathing. Yeah, exactly, right? And she was ignored by doctors for years. Mm Mm-hmm, yeah. 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 Made, made her feel like she was crazy about it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Are you sure you're not depressed? Um, what? Like that? Yes. Yeah. That yeah. was the thing. My, I had one, my primary care asked me, he was like, do you think you need to take something? It's OK. And I was like, what I need is to not come in here and be told that I'll be dead by the time I'm 30. Yeah. Is that what you got from telling them? me that? They oh, said yeah. that to you. No kidding. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. It was um, when I first got diagnosed, it was my first appointment. They told me I would never have children because my diabetes was so bad. And that if that's what I wanted, I should think about something else. Because if I was ever to get pregnant, I would automatically lose the pregnancy and would not carry the term. Communication is just a shaky art at best between people. Yeah. Yeah. And this was at 18. Oh, my gosh. I really? was a, I mean... Eight, I know 18, you're technically an adult, but I was a baby with something completely dramatic that I didn't see coming. Mm-hmm. And you're telling me that my life is forever changed and anything that I ever thought I wanted in life, I'm not going to have. Yeah. And then behind that, they're like, yeah, if you do DKA again, you keep down this road and you'll be dead before you're 30. That's how it started. Oh my gosh. And then that makes you go into... 
well, why am I fighting this if you're telling me I'm not going to live? If it's all fait accompli, if I'm dying anyway, what am I trying so hard for? Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. It's the exact, we talk about this all the time. The the communication form is so important. And yeah. just a couple of words at the wrong time, mm-hmm. in the wrong way, could send somebody on a path they could never come back from. I interviewed a lady one time. Now, she was diagnosed more like in the 50s or 60s, but right. she was in college. And the doctor told her to drop out of school and go home. You're not going to live long enough to have a career. And and the doctor oh. also told her, Mary, I'm not making this up. A man is not going to want to marry you. Oh, I believe it. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely believe it. Yep. Because that was one of my initial thoughts. Did I you was think like, that? Who's going to want to deal with this? No, it's a real thing. And then I met my husband whose sister is type one. Oh, he's like, <laughs> deal with this. I already know what this is. Yeah, yeah. He was like, within a week, he's like, can I give you a shot? And I was like, okay, either you're weird. I didn't know that t- at the time that his sister had diabetes. I was like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> well, be honest now. You've known him for a long time. He's still a little weird, right? I was like, oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, that pin's cool. Because I had I just switched from vials to pins. Mm. And he was like, that looks cool. I want to do it. And I was like, mm, yeah, well, I don't know about whatever. that. Whatever. Yeah, it's a big leap. <laughs> He's not like counting your carbs for you. You don't sit at dinner and he's like, I think that's 35 carbs. Does he do that? No, no? but okay. he will be like, hey, hey, you are going high. You are going low. You, you going to handle that today? Or he'll show up with candy and be like, take this. Try to keep you honest a little bit. I'm like, what do you what do you mean? He's like, you're heading south. And it's not even that he got an alert. It's to the point that he can look at me and yeah. he knows where I'm at or where I'm headed. Yeah. And he's like, all right, let's do something about that. Let's go for a walk. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. I sometimes I'll tell my daughter, I'm like, you're going to be low in 20 minutes. Yeah. She's like, no, I'm not. I'm like, OK. And then 20 minutes later, I'm like, <laughs> guess who was right? She's like, now it's not the time. I'm like, OK. Right. <laughs> now it's like, not I the can't time. I think right now. Yeah. I can't argue with yeah. you. Let's go. <laughs> now it's not the time, Mary, because I'm low. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I can't think straight. I'm shaking on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, all right, I don't want her to be mad at me. So I, I don't bring it up <laughs> afterwards. That's amazing. Well, I can't thank you enough for doing this. You're delightful. Uh, it was really oh, lovely this talking to you. Amazing. Did you have a good time? Yes, absolutely. Nice. You didn't know a diabetes podcast could be fun. Oh, oh, I did. I did. I did. You heard? Do you know who I am? Of course I do. Oh, oh okay. Like, I don't know if you ever heard the podcast before or not. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh, this is a big deal for you then. I, I'm making your dreams it come is. true. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it is a big deal <laughs> because that's one of the things that took me. That's one of the things that drew me to your podcast. I remember one of the episodes, one of the first episodes I heard, it was taking control mm-hmm. and not being scared to make changes. Yeah. No, I'm a proponent of it. I really am. Because that's the thing. Like they get you in there or not. I don't know if they do now so much, but especially before it was like, this is what it is. This is what you do. And don't deter from this under any circumstances. Yep, yep. Like, what do you mean? What about when I'm premenstrual or when I'm having yeah. my period or the week after my period or when this happens or when I get yeah. upset or nauseous or I run around a lot or I don't run around a lot. Like this never I'm changes. I'm traveling. I'm in the air. Yeah. I go to a higher elevation. Yeah. It's too sunny outside. But- <laughs> like, people don't understand. They don't understand. Yeah. Mary, I bet you a lot of people don't know that. Like what happens uh, mostly at higher elevations, you see people get very sensitive to insulin. Is that what happened to you? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Try yeah. to go skiing and you're like low all the time or something like that. Or yeah, like I turn my I turn my pod off when I even just on a flight. Oh, you get lower. No kidding. I'll turn my pod off because I will get a low every single time if I leave it on at my regular rate. How about that? So I'll turn it down. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. No, that's a that's really wonderful. Anyway, you were terrific. Tell me again where people could find you on uh like um social media. All right, TikTok, it's T1D Artistry. Instagram, T1D Artistry. And YouTube, it's Marry My Life, My Love. No, oh, very nice. Oh, I hope people go visit you. I, again, I can't thank you enough for doing this. I really do appreciate you telling me about this. You know, we've been talking about ever since on the podcast or an advertiser. Yeah. And I thought, like, I got to talk to somebody who's actually using it. I, I see in my yeah. Facebook group after, after I started, you know, my relationship with Eversense, on Facebook, people were jumping on and they were like, oh, my God, I'm so glad you're talking about this. Like, 
I wear this, but I don't talk about it a lot because, you know, I, it's not, not, you know, I don't think everybody wants to hear my stuff and blah, blah, blah. I'm the, but a lot of those people popped up and I was like, oh, how about that? There's a lot of people in the background using Eversense I didn't realize. Yeah. yeah. And then, if, you know, if you want to get started or take a look even further, the best place to go is eversensecgm.com forward slash juice box. And that's going to have everything that somebody needs if they want to find out to submit their insurance information, get pricing. There's a pass program that can help with calls, you know, to find out what doctors are in your area or nurses that can in put that can set you up. There's different options on how to get the product. So it's definitely worth the, at least the look at the link to see what's there. Well, Mary, I don't know if I'll ever be able to afford a PR person, but if I ever can, I'm going to call you first. So, <laughs> Well, I am always happy to have a conversation whenever. You started talking. I said, Mary better not have her own link. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> I thought you're going to be like, ever since CGM slash Mary. And I'm like, mm, not on this podcast, lady. It's juice box. But <laughs> no, it's really fantastic. I can't thank you enough. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. This was so much fun. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Okay, hold on one second. Yeah, sure thing. If you'd like to wear the same insulin pump that Arden does, all you have to do is go to omnipod.com slash juice box. That's it. Head over now and get started today, and you'll be wearing the same tubeless insulin pump that Arden has been wearing since she was four years old. I'd like to thank AG1 for sponsoring this episode of the Juice Box Podcast and remind you that with your first order, you're going to get a free welcome kit, five free travel packs, and a year's supply of vitamin D. That's at ag1.com slash juice box. Mary is an Eversense ambassador, and Eversense CGM is a sponsor of the Juice Box podcast, though this episode of the podcast is not sponsored by them. Having said that, I'd really appreciate it if you used my link to check it out. EversenseCGM.com slash juice box. If you or a loved one was just diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and you're looking for some fresh perspective, the Bold Beginning series from the Juice Box podcast is a terrific place to start. That series is with myself and Jenny Smith. Jenny is a CDCES, a registered dietitian, and a type 1 for over 35 years. And in the Bold Beginning series, Jenny and I are going to answer the questions that most people have after a type 1 diabetes diagnosis. The series begins at episode 698 in your podcast player, or you can go to juiceboxpodcast.com and click on Bold Beginnings in the menu. The Diabetes Variable series from the Juicebox Podcast goes over all the little things that affect your diabetes that you might not think about. From travel and exercise to hydration and even trampolines. Juiceboxpodcast.com. Go up in the menu and click on Diabetes Variables. If you're not already subscribed or following in your favorite audio app, please take the time now to do that. It really helps the show. And get those automatic downloads set up so you never miss an episode. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back very soon with another episode of the Juice Box Podcast. The episode you just heard was professionally edited by Wrong Way Recording. WrongWayRecording.com.